A very good morning, everybody. Uh, today we will discuss about an elongated common lymphatic trunk, which is called as the thoracic duct. Before I talk about this thoracic duct in detail, let me have a flash recall of what is the lymphatic system and what does it do. <coughs> now here the lymphatic system is uh, nothing but this is a network of vessels through which lymph drains from the tissues into the bloodstream. And this lymphatic system is a part of circulatory system and as well as the immune system. And this lymphatic system is made up of lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes and lymphoid tissues. The lymph vessels carry a clear fluid which is called as the lymph. And you know this fluid will bath the tissue, collects the waste products, bacteria and the damaged cells and then drain as a lymph into the lymphatic capillaries and lymph vessels. These vessels carry the lymph throughout the body passing through numerous lymph nodes which filter out unwanted uh, material such as bacteria and damaged cells. Now ultimately the lymph then passes into much larger lymph vessels which are known as lymphatic ducts and here in our body we have two major lymphatic ducts one is the right lymphatic duct number two is the left lymphatic duct now this left lymphatic duct is called as thoracic duct is it clear everybody now coming to the uh, functions of the lymphatic system if you see now apart from the functions which you are seeing on the slide uh, it uh, the lymphatic system also does like you know the absorption and the transport of the fatty acids as a chyle from the digestive system. Next uh, it transports the white blood cells WECs to and from the lymph nodes into the bone and uh, the lymph transports antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells which are responsible or which which stimulates the immune responses all these are the functions of the immune system now coming to the clinical significance the study of the lymphatic drainage of various organs is important in diagnosis prognosis and the treatment of the cancer the lymphatic system because of its closeness to many tissues of the body uh, it is responsible for carrying cancer cells between the various parts of the body in a process called metastasis. Next we have um, lymph adenopathy. Now this lymph adenopathy is nothing but which is the enlarged lymph nodes which is usually seen in the conditions like the tuberculosis uh, in HIV and also cancer. Then we have uh, lymph edema. Lymphedema is nothing but the swellings caused by the accumulation of the lymph uh, which is a commonly seen in a condition which is called as the uh, elephantiasis uh, which is due to a parasite which is a filarias. Now coming to the thoracic duct, as I said you before, thoracic duct it is an elongated common lymphatic trunk which conveys the chyle and the most of the lymph of the body into the bloodstream. Now this thoracic duct it drains the lymphatics from the whole body except right side of the head and neck, uh, right upper limb, then right lung and right thoracic wall and also from the right half of the heart. The characteristic features, the characteristic features of the thoracic duct if you see it is beaded in appearance and it is provided with numerous valves. Uh, the measurements if you see the measurement of the thoracic duct is about 45 centimeters in length and the width is about some 0 0.5 centimeters then coming to the cords of the thoracic duct now this thoracic duct begins from the upper end of the cisterna chyli at the lower border of T12 thoracic vertebra and enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. Then it passes upwards in the posterior mediastinum behind the esophagus 
opposite to the T5, the thoracic duct inclines to the left and then runs upwards in the superior mediastinum along the left edge of the esophagus. Now, at the root of the neck, it arches laterally opposite the transverse process of C7 and finally turns downwards to terminate in the angle formed by the junction of left internal jugular and left subclavian veins. So, this is the termination. So, this thoracic duct, it is beginning at the level of T12, then entering into thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm, then it is passing upwards in the posterior mediastinum behind the esophagus reaching to T5. At the T5, the thoracic duct is inclining to left side, then it is following, uh, then it is entering into the superior mediastinum along the left edge of the esophagus and it reaches the root of neck. At the root of neck, it arches laterally opposite to the transverse process of C7 and finally turns downwards to terminate in the angle formed by the junction of left internal jugular and left subclavian veins. This is all about the course of the thoracic duct. Now coming to the relations of the thoracic duct. Now at the aortic opening, as you all know that the aortic opening of the diaphragm is at the level of T12. Okay. So, diaphragm has got three major openings. One is the aortic opening, number two is the vena cava opening, number three is the esophageal opening. The aortic opening will be at the T12. So, the thoracic duct related, the relations of thoracic duct at the aortic opening, if you see, in front it is related to the median arcuate ligament behind uh, to the 12th thoracic vertebra, to right side it is related to the azygous vein, to left side it is uh, related to the aorta. Next in the posterior mediastinum, the thoracic duct is related and in front it is related to the posterior sloping surface of diaphragm and esophagus. Behind, it is related to the thoracic vertebra with the anterior longitudinal ligaments and also it is related with the azygous venous system and hemiazygous venous systems. And to right side, it is related to the azygous vein and to left side, it is related to the descending aorta. These are all the relations of the thoracic duct in the posterior mediastinum. Now, coming to the relations of thoracic duct in superior mediastinum, if you see, in front it is related with the arch of aorta and um, the left subclavian artery. Behind it is related with the bodies of upper four thoracic vertebrae, and to its right it is related to the esophagus, and to its left it is related to the left lung and pleura. Now, coming to the relations of the thoracic duct at the root of the neck if you see. Now here in front it is related to the left carotid sheath and its contents and you know all know that what are the contents of carotid sheath. Carotid sheath contains the internal jugular vein, the common carotid artery and the vagus nerve. And behind it is related with the left sympathetic trunk, then left uh, the first part of the vertebral artery, then the branches of the thyrocervical trunk like inferior thyroid, transverse cervical and suprascapular arteries and also it is related with the left scalenous anterior muscle and the phrenic nerve. All these are the structures which are related to the thoracic duct at the root of the neck. Now coming to the tributaries of the thoracic duct if you see. Now this thoracic duct receives the lymph from the both halves below the diaphragm through cisterna chile and left half above the diaphragm uh, like you know number one from the posterior intercostal lymph nodes to of lower six spaces from upper lumbar nodes then from posterior mediastinal lymph nodes and posterior intercostal lymph nodes from axilla through left subclavian trunk uh, then from nodes of left half of head and neck through left jugular trunk from left half of the thorax Okay, all these are the tributaries 
uh, which uh, receives which received by the thoracic duct and occasionally uh, left bronchomediastinal lymph node uh, that that means the left bronchomediastinal lymph trunk which drains left lung and left side of the heart will also will be opening into the thoracic duct yeah finally coming to the applied anatomy now um, the thoracic duct may be obstructed by the growth of mature filarial parasites uh, producing sometimes bursting of lymph vessels and this is manifested by the collection of the chyle uh, in the pleura and the peritoneal sacs now if the chyle is present in the pleura that we call it as a chylothorax and if is if the chyle is accumulated or if it is present in the peritoneal sacs then that is called as the condition is called as chyloperitoneum and one more condition which is called as the chyluria now this chyluria is nothing but it is a medical condition involving the presence of the chyle in the urine uh, where the urine appearance appear uh, when the the urine appears milky white in color and this is caused due to the filariasis uh, due to the presence of the parasite which is called as the vicaria brancrofti this is and uh, next not only that the cervical part of the thoracic duct is damaged in the blocked sections of the necks and uh, the thoracic duct is very thin walled and it is very beaded in appearance it is um, colorless so it is more prone to the injuries during the surgeries in the posterior media stenum all these are the applied anatomy which you can uh, put in the thoracic duct this is all about the thoracic duct and this is very important topic that everyone should know about what is thoracic duct uh, what is its course uh, termination relations uh, tributaries and finally you should also add a note on its applied anatomy i once again say you that the course is very important see the course of the thoracic duct it begins as a continuation of cisterna chyli at the lower border of T12 thoracic vertebra and enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm then it passes upwards in the posterior mediastinum behind the esophagus and on reaching to the T5 thoracic vertebra it inclines to left and then runs upwards in the superior mediastinum along the left edge of esophagus and it reaches to the root of the neck and at the root of the neck it arches laterally opposite to the transverse process of c7 and finally it turns downwards to terminate in angle formed by the junction of left internal jugular and left subclavian vein this is very 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 important to know about its course and relations also already have been mentioned and i hope you understand this session thank you